And when we learn something is wrong, it doesn't matter if all of Christendom is wrong. Just repent. <laughs> Why would we hold on to something that isn't correct? Why are we saving face? Repent. <laughs>so is selling books and t-shirts in a church okay or does it anger God when things are sold in churches? That's a great question. A lot of pastors would disagree with me, but I go with what the Word says and what the Holy Spirit has led me personally. Yes, it does anger God. Jesus was angry three times in a row every Passover when they were selling things. And here's the point. They were selling things necessary for temple worship. They were exchanging money, which was necessary for giving an offering at the temple. And they also were uh, selling um, uh, animals and, and other things used for the sacrifices and the ceremonies that were observed in the temple. So the point Jesus was making is, stop buying and selling in my father's house. It's not a market. And what we've done is we've taken our churches and we've turned them into corporations and we buy and sell in them. And it's it's really not what we're supposed to do. The church is supposed to be a place where we receive donations. But then if you look at Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4, we redistribute what's given and donated to the people who are in need. In fact, Acts chapter 4 makes the case that the grace of God was working so powerfully among the believers that there were no needy persons among them. They weren't buying and selling. What they were doing was in their own time, they were selling their possessions. They were bringing the money to the apostles. The apostles during the services were redistributing to people who were in need and there was no buying or selling at church. It was actually meant to be a place that was charitable and giving to people. So no, we shouldn't be selling books or t-shirts in church. You heard it here, but where you heard it first was through Jesus in the Gospels. We've just been ignoring him. And listen, as I mentioned earlier, it's so important that we repent. I've been a Christian for 20 years. Jesus has been making me repent of all sorts of things, especially in the last few years. I don't know. Listen, just repent. When we're wrong, just repent. Stop being arrogant. Uh, Paul made the case to the Corinthian church, no man knows anything as he ought to know it. And that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So if we think we're so smart and we're so wise and we're never relenting and we're never repenting and we're never accepting that that we've been wrong or that we could ever be an error or, or so-and-so, this man, or you know, we'll quote theologians or we'll quote commentaries, cut that stuff out. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would teach you all things. John, in one of his epistles, he says that that anointing, the Holy Spirit, teaches you all things you don't need anyone to teach you. That's what he said. Now, it's good. We're supposed to fellowship. We're supposed to share what we're learning with one another. But your ultimate teacher is the Holy Spirit in you. It's not commentaries. It's not theologians. It's not church fathers. It's the Father. It's the Holy Spirit in you. It's Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our teacher, our Messiah. That's who our actual teacher is. And when we learn something is wrong, it doesn't matter if all of Christendom is wrong. Just repent. <laughs> Why would we hold on to something that isn't correct? Why are we saving face? Repent. <laughs> At one point, I had made a video on this channel where I had argued that Jesus would, uh, for example, and I've taken that video down since, but that he would bake cakes for gay marriage. No, he wouldn't. He would love people who are practicing homosexuality, but what he did with every sinner that he ever met, he called them to repentance. I taught falsely. Do you understand? I taught falsely and the Holy Spirit convicted me. And so I am even right now repenting, but I repented, I deleted the videos and changed my stance. Why? Because I was in error. Okay, so when we're in error as fallible human beings, and this is also why neither myself or any pastor that you ever listen to do not take what they say as being gospel. And what I mean by that is we can get it wrong. Study the word, do not go beyond what is written and listen to the Holy Spirit teaching you. Amen? So whether it's regarding how we approach gay marriage, whether it's regarding buying and selling in the church, whether it's regarding the actual day that Jesus was crucified, it doesn't matter the topic. If we've been in error, repent. Do you realize how often we read in our Bible the word repent, but how little we actually do it? Do you know that the scriptures say repent over and over and over again because we are so prone not to repent? 
That's why God repeats himself over and over and over. In fact, the scriptures say that Jesus' gospel is a gospel of repentance, that it's a gospel that when you hear it, you're supposed to change your mind and believe what's said. Again, I've been a Christian for two decades. The Holy Spirit has been making me change my mind on all sorts of things. Let the Spirit lead you. Your pastor can be wrong. I can be wrong. God is always right. Let God be true and every man a liar. (laughs) 